1001 movies you must see before you die. I break each one down for you in five minutes. Number two, The Great Train Robbery. The Great Train Robbery, made in 1903 in the USA, directed by Edwin S. Porter. It runs at 11 minutes long and is arguably one of the very first westerns to be made. One of the actors in it was actually called Bronco Billy, but that name came later. Partly inspired by the 1900 train robbery committed by Butch Cassidy, it's the first example of composite filmmaking, which to laymen like you and I means the linking of smaller scenes to create a larger narrative. It's also the first example of on-location shooting, first example of camera movement atop the train, and the first example of cross-cutting, you know, two scenes happening simultaneously. It had a budget of $150. Despite that, it was considered the most popular film of the silent era, until Birth of a Nation came along, and oh, we'll get to that in the next episode. The plot is simple, it's a great train robbery. It opens with two bandits breaking into a railroad telegraph office and holding the guy in charge at gunpoint. They order him to have the upcoming train stopped. They knock him out and tie him up. Meanwhile, four other bandits wait patiently by a water tank as the train in question pulls in. The bandits sneak aboard the train and what will be the first of many deaths on this 1001 film journey kill the guy on board guarding the safe. The bandits force the passengers off the train and while collecting their belongings, one of the passengers makes a break for it. He's ruthlessly gunned down. The bandits flee with their winnings and hold up in a valley nearby. Meanwhile, a young child, who should have been in school, arrives at the telegraph office, discovers the tied up operator and cuts him free. Cut to some sort of barn dance in which it's not clear if you're watching the bandits or the inevitable heroic posse that will eventually be their undoing. The dance number goes on for a while, showcasing some very out of the time dancing. Finally, a man rushes in, all of them run into a valley and kill the bandits and get the loot. Okay, Great Train Robbery. Now, unlike the previous film on this list, A Trip to the Moon, this is much more down the line. This is probably the earliest Western recorded. Clint Eastwood wishes he could have made this film. It is. It is one of the first Westerns, really, that, that was made. And it follows a very, by the numbers, plot progression, by today's standards anyway. You know, bandits go in, um... They jump a train, they kill some passengers, they steal the loot, they're gunned down by the posse at the end. Um, and, you know, despite that, actually, it's fantastic. It's another 10 out of 10 film. And the reason is, this hadn't been seen before. And one of the earliest films in cinema, rather than playing fuzzy, fuzzy, nice, nice to everyone, decided we're going to focus on bandits. We're going to focus on bad guys and make you watch the bad guys' action. And yes, inevitably, they get their comeuppance at the end. But this is a great example, early, early on in the days of cinema, of showing a character like uh, uh, Norman Bates or um, the, the lead character in Goodfellas, whose, whose name escapes me at this moment. You're forced to identify, well, not even identify, but you're forced to see the world through the eyes of the bad guys this early in cinema because you follow them. You're not following the law enforcement from the beginning, and then you're hearing about the bandits. You are following the bandits. And, you know, there's deaths on screen. They chuck a guy off the train in what's a great little edit moment where they're fighting on top of a train, punch, throwing punches, and then they obviously freeze the camera, freeze the scene, stop the camera, move the guy's body out and get in the dummy and throw it off the train, and it looks very effective. Later, they shoot down um, a, a passenger who flees as well uh, because he, he tries to make a break for it. They gun him down, and then they're gunned down at the end. Who are we rooting for in this film? We're focused on, on them, so like, we kind of were titillated by that. And, you know, it, it, it was great for other reasons other than the fact that it challenged people's uh, morality, I guess, at the time. Maybe it didn't even challenge their morality. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it feels like it did. There were cinematic techniques, like the moving camera on top of the train, which was great. There were a few crossfades, um, and, you know, it was just good storytelling. Again, it runs at, what, what was it, 11 minutes or something like that, so it didn't need to keep your attention for very, very long, and if it was longer than that, I would have struggled, naturally, as would you, as would anybody but it was perfect for that, so it's a 10 out of 10. Um, it's got to be said, that final shot, or at the beginning, based on, on which version you watch, of the bandits shooting at the screen, I can't believe anyone would shoot back at the screen 
But they did, and I learned that in my film course, so it must be true, eh? Um, Joe Pesci also does that at the end of Goodfellas, so Scorsese obviously liked that technique. Next time on 1001 in 5, The Birth of a Nation.